It's Saturday night in Danville, and we're about to meet some really interesting people as the One Team One Dream Foundation presents An Evening with the Edmonds Brothers. Featuring appearances by Tremaine Edmonds, second year pro bowler with the Buffalo Bills. Terrell Edmonds, who started his time with the Steelers by earning Rookie of the Year. And Trey Edmonds, the first fullback in the NFL to intercept a pass in decades. We'll also have chats with their dad, star pro bowler from the Miami Dolphins and the Seattle Seahawks, Farrell Edmonds. And Kenny Lewis, who had a great football career going from George Washington High School up through Virginia Tech and the New York Jets. The Edmonds will be talking to sports guys Dennis Carter and Chuck Fipperman. And I'll be introducing you to all these special people coming up. And let's start with Kenny Lewis, played for the New York Jets after an outstanding football career at George Washington High School and Virginia Tech. In fact, he is in the Hokies Sports Hall of Fame. Kenny was the first African-American football player from George Washington High School to play in the NFL. After his time with the Jets, he came back to Danville and became the principal of George Washington High School. Other accomplishments included the Rotary Club awarding him the Service Above Self Award. Kiwanis named him the Man of the Year. He also is the founder of the Boys and Girls Club in Danville and the Danville Church and Community-based tutorial programs. And Kenny Jr. was an outstanding athlete, high school and college, and his daughter Lauren was also an outstanding athlete at George Washington High School. Too many times I'm feeling all alone, stressed out of a couple of dollars. I gave my all and now you're gone. I put the rocks up in your chain, I'm shining all alone. You played me 50 and I gave me... Our church-based tutorial program has went through a a feasibility study with a consultant funded by the Danville Regional Foundation and one of the recommendations was to consider uh, changing the name and doing a little rebranding. So we, from the Danville Church Based Tutorial Program, it, came, it changed to the Danville uh, Church and Community Tutorial Program. So we thought that was, which we've always thought about that because is, uh, you know, our program is in churches as well as community centers. So we have certainly uh, put that together and uh, which I think is a great thing for us, uh, great rebranding. And you know, the church-based tutorial program and My Brother's Keeper has, has come together to form One Dream, One Team, all right? And so One Dream, One Team is its own nonprofit right now, you know, and uh, which I think is great. We have come together and uh, we have formed a wonderful committee that, that does the fundraising. So we certainly want to give a shout out to our committee. So that's how we have come together to form One Dream, One Team. Man, our gala has been going on for two years and been a set out every two years and want to inform people and we can get together in a wonderful event. And uh, we are certainly thankful for us being able to do this virtual, you know, just kind of communicating to our stakeholders and our, our community of what we are doing because, you know, because of the pandemic, we're still out there trying to help educationally, helping scholarships, we're helping, you know, sports camps, that kind of thing. So we're still actively involved and doing the best we can virtually. Uh, but I think the, the major thing is that we will continue to be at the forefront of supporting kids, especially getting through this pandemic. You know, we are going to take things to another level because I can really see us impacting our entire region uh, educationally as well as, you know, uh, athletically. I think, you know, Danville, we certainly uh, have always been talented with the athletic kids and uh, we want to make sure they, they get, they use their talent, display their talent appropriately so they can get the exposure that they need. It's a great opportunity to look back at what I did and then have your boys come behind you to do some, you know, some of the same stuff that you did, you know. Um, each one of the boys have their own identity, so their approach to the NFL was different than mine. But, you know, it's a great feeling to have them play. It's, it's, it's so great, you know, uh, to watch football different because playing you're on the field you look in the stands and now i'm in the stand looking down at the boys uh play and uh you know and have fun and just to enjoy the game the foundation is basically geared in uh three levels you know we have a platinum uh sponsor we uh you know five thousand dollars coming in and uh e five thousand dollars sponsor get 
four uh, season tickets to any game of their choice, and they get uh, different items from the boys. Then we have the gold sponsorship, that's 2,500. Then the silver, the silver is $1,000. I mean, I mean, so far it's been great. I mean, we have a lot of support in the community, but you know, just to see support in, in Danville, Virginia, been great. Well, like growing up, it was, it was a great place to raise a family. You know what I mean? Small city, the boys, and it gave me the opportunity to coach my boys. I mean, I coached at Danville High School, so I had the opportunity to coach all three of the boys. I, so I saw the development from Little League to uh, high school and then to college. So it gave me a hands-on experience with the boys. The boys give back to the foundation too. The boys put back into it as well. You know what I mean? With the sponsoring, with the boys, uh, give back. I mean, it's been great. You know what I mean? I mean, every year they give uh, a sizable amount to the foundation. They really help a lot of different organizations here in Danville. You know, it's not just one organization they give to, they give to a whole lot of different organizations that, that really have an impact here in Danville. What I really want, uh, how I really want to impact the boys, I want the boys to understand is, is better to something to give to receive. Because God been real good to the boys. You know what I mean? They have blessed the boys with a lot of talent. But to see a smile on other people's faces, giving back to organizations that right now, it's a needed time in the world. You know what I mean? A lot of people going through different things. Just to see that the boys have a little small impact in somebody's life. It should mean something to them because it means something to me because I played in the NFL. I know when you give back and, and, and have an impact on somebody's life, it changed their way of thinking. They want to give back. And it, it's, it's a trickle-down effect. So, I mean, that's what I want the boys to realize that right now they in the opportunity to really <clears throat> make a change because a lot of different things in the world that need, need to be changed and all the different causes is out there. It's a great opportunity for them right now to be in the front of all of that and stand for something. Hello and welcome again. We've been talking about the Edmonds Brothers for quite a while. Now we're going to hear from the Edmonds Brothers. My name's Chuck Vipperman. To my left is Dennis Carter. Uh, we have lots of experience in the local sports in the area. Dennis and I uh, now have the privilege of uh, talking to uh, the three Edmonds Brothers. And if you don't know them, they are Tremaine, Terrell, and Trey. Youngest to oldest this time. I'll be switching up next time. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you have just finished a football season that was like none other in NFL history. Uh, no one has held a football season during a pandemic before. When this started, I think we could safely say nobody had a clue how to do this. Um, I'll get you, uh, starting with you, uh, Rel, uh, what were some of the things you did this year that you never thought you would have to do just to get on a football field? Man, honestly, everything was just, just crazy like you stated um, because this off season, we didn't know if we were gonna have a season. We still knew that we had to train um, we didn't have OTAs. We didn't have to go back to Pittsburgh early during the off season just to go train and get acclimated with the new teammates mm -hmm. and everything. So um, we were back home the whole time. My brothers and I, we all just worked together uh, this off season, and we just was trying to keep on grinding and get ready for the season because we didn't know if we were going to have a season, but we knew that if we did have a season, we had to be ready for it. Man, what was it like in Buffalo? Weird as, as everywhere else, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, we always going through the same thing at the same time, and it, it happened so fast. You know, I just remember back, you know, we didn't even know if we was going to do OTAs. So that got canceled, you know, uh, and we was kind of just on the waiting game then. So just kind of waiting to hear news from the NFL as to when we were returning back to work. And, you know, when we finally got back to work, man, they had so many different protocols. But, oh, you know, yeah. one good thing I will say about Buffalo, you know, we had a, you know, they, I think they did a real good job of how they did a facility. You know, we had tents out there. Uh, sanitation stations, uh, spray, disinfectant spray everywhere. And, you know, everybody was separated a lot. So, you know, we did the social distance thing a lot. Um, even, you know, our cafeteria was shut down. So we had to adjust the way that we ate. Everybody ate outside kind of like in a, in a tent, but the tables were spaced out a lot. So, uh, I mean, everything was, you had to get used to everything because it was completely different. Nothing that we was used to. So, uh, but, you know, I think a positive thing about it is, I think it, it, it drew us all closer together. You know, we was forced to spend more time 
you know, not in a, in a small location, but at the same time, you know, talk amongst each other in small little groupings, you know, just because we couldn't really be as close to each other as we usually are in, in, the, um, in the past. So I think it was good. It definitely has some advantages and, you know, kind of some disadvantages, but I mean, that's just like any other pandemic, you know? Yeah. Trey, well, yeah, just, we go through that every year. <laughs> Trey, what were your experiences like? Uh, again, we've never done this before and there's no book on how to do this. How did you guys do it? Right, uh, sort of similar to what the guy said, you know, it was just a life of uncertainty, you know, uh, something that we have never seen before. You know, our country, our, you know, league, our team, you know, no one. So everybody just had to adjust to it. You know, it was just something that we all had to, you know, kind of figure out on the fly. You know, and I think that, um, you know, when you get placed in these teams and these organizations, you know, uh, we're being led by, you know, some of the strongest and some of the best people, you know, so it was a lot of people in place that could adjust on the fly, you know, so they made it a lot easier and just working with different groups and, uh, you know, to stand under CDC guidelines and uh, stand under the mayor's guidelines. They changed every day. You know what I'm saying? They changed every day. So uh, we had to be real flexible. We had to be real flexible. I mean, from just how we walked in the building to how we left the building, you know, everything had to be flexible, but you know, we managed to get through the whole, uh, the entire season and, um, I, I, I like to say that it was, just, it was a success. Yeah, just to follow up on that, it's kind of amazing that no games were canceled. Exactly. We had some games moved around. Delayed. You guys played on a Tuesday. Steelers especially, yeah. yeah. You yeah. guys are all yeah. over the place. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I was going to say, you know, um, some weeks, you know, you would walk in the building thinking you were going to play that week, and <laughs> you would just still be practicing on the day you're supposed to travel. You know, I know Terrell and I experienced that. Um, I think we had a Tennessee game that we that was the first you know um, delayed game we had and we just kind of had to figure it out you know usually on Fridays we're putting the final touches and finishing touches to the game plan but this particular Friday you know we were doing the walkthrough a little bit longer so it was just one of those situations where we didn't quite know how it would turn out but we had a feeling that it would turn out good you know so just kind of just uh, dealing with things on the fly and just trying to stay as safe as possible. Jermaine, one of the real drawbacks of playing in a pandemic, nobody gets to come and see your games or very few people. What was that like? Because you guys have played in front of fans your entire life. You played in front of 66,000 plus at Lane Stadium and to have very few fans at all in the stadium. What was that like? Yeah, it, it was tough, man. You know, I got to be honest. It was, it was real tough just because, I mean, you know, I think that's what sports is about. You know, a lot of people think it's about us, but you know, the truth of the matter is it's about the fans. And, you know, we get energy from the fans and the fans is what makes that, you know, that, that feeling so electric. And uh, I think we were missing that, obviously, until the, I think our first playoff game, that was the first time we had fans. And you could just tell the difference, like from the energy to how it affected us, affected us on the field. It was just, it was a big difference, man. And, you know, honestly, I didn't, I didn't get used to it none throughout the season. Like, every time I stepped out there, I was like, man, we got to go through this again. I was just hoping, I was just hoping a miracle would happen. And, you know, they'd say, you know, you have fans this next week. But, you know, we was fortunate enough that they allowed fans our first playoff game. And it was amazing. It was amazing out there. Rella, how do you play in front of cardboard cutouts? <laughs> Man, like Tremaine said, it was it was it wasn't fun at all. Sure. It wasn't fun at all. It was we were going out there each week, uh, pretty much dreading it because the fans they give us energy each week. We go out there, we get excited whenever anybody makes a play. The fans they just go crazy for the whole team, and it just it gives you energy. You can say, and for us, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, we had no fans at the beginning of the season. Uh, we had a few games where we did have fans, and then they stripped us from fans again. Mm -hmm. So it was just that. Uh, emotional roller coaster right there from not having fans again um, that we just had to go through this whole season. With all the changes, guys, did you ever develop into some kind of a routine as far as the week was concerned? I, I guess you guys were kind of on edge uh, every day after going through the testing and stuff. And yeah. Want so to make I, sure everybody was available. So I'm glad you brought that up. So <laughs> testing was actually in our routine. Yeah. <laughs> so every morning. So every morning. I would say that probably started off the routine. You know, you wake up in the morning. First thing you do as soon as you get to the facility, you got to take a COVID test. So after you do that, uh, you got to, you know, I'm not sure how it is with Pittsburgh, but we have like little contact traces and it, it keeps track of, you know, the, the amount of people that you come in contact with while you're at the facility. So, you know, I picked that up. We got like a temperature check as soon as you walk into the building. So I get my temperature checked. And, you know, from there, we had like to go lunches because, you know, not lunches, I'm sorry, breakfast. We had to go breakfast and, uh, you know, you had to pick your breakfast up and 
like I said, the cafeteria was shut down, so we had to find our own little space that was social distance from each other and sit down and eat breakfast. And then from there, you know, we went into meetings and then from on, on down for it from uh, walkthroughs to practice to, you know, lifting weights and stuff like that. But I mean, after you got into a routine, the kind of days just kind of start stacking and, you know, you didn't think so much about it. It's got to be aggravating, though. I mean, just, <laughs> football players, I was one once upon a time, we're used to routine. Absolutely. Monday, we're doing this. Tuesday, we're doing this. Wednesday, we're doing Even the hour of the day is predetermined until 2020. <laughs> Football season came along. Rel, mm -hmm. just give us a sense of what it was like trying to establish a routine when every day the rules were different. Well, just speaking back from what Shemaine said, uh, we started that initial routine. And then if someone had a COVID on your team, mm -hmm. then you have a whole new routine. So we have virtual meetings one day. And then one day we might have in-person meetings and every day is different because some days you might have to wake up at, let's say, 730 to go to the facility to mm -hmm. make sure that you take your COVID test and then get ready for meetings. Other days you don't have to be there until 10 o'clock because all of your meetings are virtual. Mm -hmm. And it's just the up and down of that because it can all change in a week, it can change in a day. It can be like that for two days. It can be like that for however long. And it, it constantly changes every day, pretty much. Well, Trey, we mentioned about the routine. Um, and I think Maine said something earlier, it helps you to learn to adjust. Uh, football teams adjust. Uh, you adjust at halftime. You adjust between drives. You would call audibles on the play. <laughs> and this, if nothing else, has uh, gotten the league and the individual players used to the concept that, yes, we can do this if we're resourceful. I, I guess there has to be a plus side to all this. Right, absolutely. And I also think that it opened... Uh, the league's eyes to, you know, alternatives, mm -hmm. you know, um, whether that's for off-season training or off-season workouts or, you know, any of that stuff. Like, I think it opened the league's eyes to different alternatives that could possibly work. You know, uh, I think the thing, some of the things that we did this year, no one could have ever imagined, mm -hmm. you know, an NFL team doing. You know, staying at home during OTAs and minicamp. You know, who would ever imagine? You would think that there's no way a team could be ready to play uh, with no preseason games, you know, a, a modified training camp, no OTAs, no mini camp, but all teams did it, you know, and all teams did it. And um, a lot of teams had success in the playoffs. And then you had the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, of course, who took it all the way. But, you know, it just showed that there are different ways and different alternatives to, you know, reach the same goal. You know, and I think one thing that the guys mentioned is that uh, the number one thing on my routine was telling myself each and every day that today is subject to change. You know? <laughs> so I told myself that every day. So That's whatever, like you know this, what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> whatever came to me, I just dealt with it. Trail, you mentioned ups and downs of the season. Uh, you and Trey had some ups and downs of the season. Mm -hmm. Steelers started out 11-0. I have not figured it out myself. I'm still trying to process oh, the whole thing. I, I came to my senses that the season's over with, but just starting off so high and just going 11 and 0, and then the last few games not going in our favor, it was just it was crazy and tough to deal with. And then even the playoff game, we didn't play our best game that game. It was just tough to deal with. But um, we just got to keep on working this all season. So next year. If we do start off 11 and 0, we can keep on pushing and keep on stacking from there. Trey, what was your perspective on this? You had a different seat, but still a seat. Yeah, absolutely, it was rough. You know, it was rough. You know, um, going undefeated, start off 11 and 0, you're getting a lot of praise, you're getting a lot of pats on your back. But we know that the bullseye is doing nothing but getting bigger and bigger. You know, but that's that's the hard part about it. Because sometimes when you know, it's still hard to like. What do you do about it? You know, so. I don't want to say that, you know, I, like, I don't want to say that we approach things differently, but it's just what happened. You know, it's just a part of the game. You know, uh, we dropped one game and then we dropped another, then we dropped another, and it was, it was just hard to get back on track. You know, it was just typical NFL season. You know, each and every week, you really have to bring your A game. And I think that that statement gets overlooked sometimes, but that's the fact of the matter. Like, you could be playing an undefeated team or you could be playing a Owen whatever team. You know, each and every week you have to bring your A game, or if not, it's a possibility you could lose. Jermaine, three years under your belt now, two-time Pro Bowl pick. The learning never stops, though. As you learn more, does your job become tougher? 
Yeah, I think so. You know, I definitely think so. Um, it, it, it depends on really how you look at it. You know, I've always been a type of player, you know, I've never been, you know, comfortable with whatever type of performance I put on, you know, even if it was, you know, what, what may be called a good performance, you know, it was always something that I would try to nitpick on that I could get better with. And that, you know, that's always been my mindset and that continue being my mindset. And, you know, even now, you know, just going into year four, it's so much more that I can grow from. You know, I, you know, I had ups and downs. Everything hasn't been a roller coaster. You know, I'm fortunate enough, you know, got two Pro Bowls under my belt. But even with that, man, it's so much more that I knew I can improve in and be, you know, so, so, so much more of a better player. And I'm just looking forward to that. You know, I, I got a great group of guys to learn from in, on our team. Uh, you know, got two brothers I could ask questions to just to get a different perspective of the game. But, you know, I'm just going to dive in, man, and continue getting better, continue getting smart, and, you know, just continue developing my game. Nate, I know you're the quiet one, but I'm going to get you to speak a little bit more here. <laughs> uh, you know, we talked about the Steelers uh, 2020 season. A word about the Bills 2020 season. You guys came close. Um, uh, best season in uh, a generation for a rabid, rabid nation of football fans. Uh, who uh, really, really had a lot of reason to cheer. You almost got there. What's it going to take to take that final step to get to the big one? I think it's to stay hungry like we were. And, uh, you know, like I said, we got a great group of guys. And, I mean, we all push each other. I mean, it, starts, it really starts now, you know, just us checking in on each other, uh, you know, making sure everybody's, you know, working, you know, taking downtime for, uh, for sure. But, you know, still developing, um, you know, getting that mindset and getting ready for this upcoming season. But, you know, right now, <clears throat> it's more so get away from it, you know, yeah. just relax uh, and just kind of get your body back right, you know, spend time with family, you know, and uh, get your body healthy. But, I mean, you know, when we get back, you know, I think it, it just starts with what we do at practice. You know, I'm a, I'm a key believer in uh, what you do at practice, what you're going to do in the game. So, you know, we just got to continue to, you know, take accountability everybody and just continue to, with that mindset of getting better each and every day. And um, I mean, everything else take care of itself. Terrell Tremaine mentioned getting your body healthy. Mm -hmm. You had some off season shoulder surgery and rehab. How much did that help you? Do you feel like your, your body is, feels healthier now? Yes, I feel pretty good. I'm still in the process of just rehabbing right now, but I feel good. I feel very confident that uh, this coming up season, I'm gonna be a hundred percent and just ready to go. Um, just right now, just the main focus for me right now is just making sure everything is on point and healthy and getting my strength back together and just being ready for the season when my, when my number's called. Trey, I'm going to get you to follow up a little bit on that. And uh, uh, since you're the oldest of the bunch, you're uh, closer to me in age. <laughs> and just to let people know, uh, if I fall down from this chair, it's going to hurt for a week. <laughs> you fall down on every play in an NFL game. It's rare that uh, on a play you don't have some physical contact. Tell us about the process of like they talked about getting your body healed from that. You're in a constant state of aches and pains from week one through 16. What is the process like to get that body back? Right, so I think it's uh, a lot on what the guy said, you know, just taking some time completely off, mm -hmm. you know, just stepping away from the game. Uh, not looking at it, not studying it, not thinking about it, just literally like taking a physical and mentally break, mental break. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's really important because it's taxing. You know, like the season starts, you think about it, the season starts March all the way up until, you know, for Tremaine and those guys, the end of January, yeah. you know, so it, it's a long and taxing season and demands are high uh, and you exert so much energy, you know, but like I said, both mentally and physically. So, I think it's very important that you know each and every guy like completely takes time off and then like like we talked about earlier you have to find a routine find something that works for you not just during the season but during the off season as well mm -hmm. i know a lot of guys like they may start off a little slower um doing more like bike work and pool work and things like that that's not necessarily uh too physical but it's still kind of getting your wind back and uh, keep you in shape and things like that so i think it's just finding a routine that works for you you know finding a good trainer um Get, in, get into a spot in which you're able to train, you're able to focus, but you're also able to have fun too because this is the time you want to have fun and you want to be able to live as well. So I, I think it's a culmination of all of that. People talk about the off season, but is it really an off season? I mean, you guys are always <laughs> training, getting ready for the games and, you know, the preseason and stuff. You, you the work never stops for you guys. Terrell just shaking his head over here like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it doesn't stop. It's always, you're constantly, 
working out or, or just thinking about the game or anything, honestly, because just us being athletes, just sitting out for a week or two weeks, yes, our body needs it, but our mind is like, man, what are you doing? You can't just sit right here and rest <laughs> all day. It's like you got to go out there and do something, maybe just go on a walk, something, something a little less intense, but your mind is always like, what are you doing? You can't just sit right here all day doing nothing. <laughs> so it's just that you always have that mindset just being an athlete, and that's something that you always will take on. I wanted to ask you guys, again, as wacky as the season was, uh, getting ready for the season was wacky. Workouts are a part of life for you guys. How creative did you have to get? I'll start with Maine. Uh, creative in working out in the age of COVID. Again, you're not supposed to get within six feet of anybody. Uh, mask is in the gym. I still haven't figured that one out yet because I about choke when I try that. Um, how do you, what some of the creative ways you guys, because you cannot not get into shape before you play an NFL season. Yeah, we did a little bit of everything. Um, you know, I start with probably the most expensive thing. We ordered a, um, God, excuse me, what's, what jug are we machine. Jug, jug machine. Jug oh, okay. machine. So it's like one of the machines you put a football in mm -hmm. and, you know, self catch type of thing. And yeah. we ordered one of those to, you know, work on our catching ability since, you know, you're not going to really have a quarterback. I know myself, I'm not a good quarterback and <laughs> I wouldn't really say they are either. So we had to order, we had to order a machine to take care of that. And uh, everything else, man, it was just creative. You know, we ordered some equipment, yeah. you know, some barbells and just little small stuff that we could use to just stuff around the house that we wouldn't have to go nowhere, obviously, because everywhere was closed. So we right. did that. Uh, obviously, we went out to the field with each other. Um, you know, here in Danville, we went to the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we did a whole lot of different stuff that just, you know, we were social distance from everybody, but amongst us, each other. I mean, we just got real creative with it, uh, whether if it was hills, I mean, it's, it's almost so much stuff to think of because we were just, whatever we thought of, we just went and did it. You know, obviously stuff that we had access to. So, um, I mean, I wish I, could, I wish I could just go back and just write down everything that we did because it was so much, but I think that we did a good job. And, you know, one good thing about us, we were fortunate as three of us. And so, you know, we wasn't out there training alone. We had each other to push us. We had each other to push each other. So it was, it was almost like you was training with a team, but... It was, it was your brothers, the people that you always train with. So it was normal to us. But at the same time, we got some good work in. And I really think it helped us out throughout the season. Jermaine, when most people think of Buffalo, they think of snow, cold <laughs> weather. When you're not playing football, what's your favorite thing to do in Buffalo? Is there anything fun to do in Buffalo? Yes, yeah, it's, it's some fun stuff to do for sure. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm a laid back type of guy. Man, I, I like to either either put on Netflix, put on Hulu. Uh, I put on something, man. I watch a TV show, find a new movie or something. You know, I'm a I'm a big eater type. I'm I'm a big I, I'm a guy that like to eat. So I find a good restaurant. Uh, I order it in for takeout, obviously because of what we were going through. Uh, if not that, I get in the kitchen to cook myself. Or uh, I, mean, I try to get on the game a little bit this year. I'm not a real big gamer, but it's been something I've been trying to get under my belt a little bit, but, you know, I'm still taking steps forward towards that. So, uh, but that's a couple of things that I did. Well, I'll ask you this in terms of uh, where we're at at this point in your football careers, and we can call them careers now. You all have multiple seasons under your belt. I've heard from other NFL veterans, uh, they said that after the third season is when you really feel like a veteran, when you feel like I'm in this league, I belong in this league, this is not an accident. I've earned my way here. Now I'm a pro. How close is that to the truth? Um, this your third year of starting with Pittsburgh. How, how how more how much more comfortable do you feel this year as opposed to say just 12 months ago? Man, I feel very comfortable. I, I still felt very comfortable uh, 12 months ago, mm -hmm. but just every year you're constantly growing. Yeah. Um, anyone would say that you wouldn't be a, a ball player if you say that you you reach your peak mm -hmm. as you're playing. So you're just constantly growing. Every year you, you're getting better at something. Every year you're feeling more comfortable doing something. You learn your body more. And that's just where I'm at now, just constantly getting better at some of the smaller things that um, I can just improve my game on and just constantly trying to get better, trying to improve on something every year, each game trying to improve on something and just constantly growing. Terrell, during the off season, you made a rap music video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we ride. Yeah, we ride. <laughs> Tell me what that experience was like. How much fun did you have doing that? So I go to the studio all the time. I just, I love to do music. I'm just passionate about it. I like to just go in there and whatever comes to mind, just talk about it. And then just in the studio that day, we did that. And I think it was maybe a week after or so, 
we went, I, I texted the guy and I said, let's shoot a music video. That was my first time ever doing a music video. I didn't know what to expect. Um, it was snowing outside. It was like 10 o'clock at night. We went outside, we just did the music video and it came out really nice. And then I just put it out there on YouTube so everyone can see it. And it had a lot of great feedback. So now I'm just working on some more music. I'm gonna put out some more music videos and do that as well as work out. So just constantly going back and forth, just working out, music video rehab, just all of that. Just keep me busy, keep my mind working. All right, we've heard your spare time making rap videos. You're a restaurateur or a, <laughs> a, a, a foodie, I think is the, ter uh, the term. Trey, what about uh, some of your hobbies that, again, you have to sometimes wait till the season's over, but uh, what is an off season like for you? Yeah, so uh, definitely training. Mm. Training is, is at the top oh, of the you know, you know? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm kind of getting big into public speaking. You know, I kind of started that on my social media platforms. And um, really the reason I want to do that is kind of, you know, I've been blessed to be surrounded around a lot of great people and uh, to hear a lot of knowledge along the way and uh, during my journey. And I had some things that happened in my journey that really sat me down, you know, and I was able to really like pick up on things that maybe I wouldn't have picked up on if I was just going full speed the entire time, you know? So I've seen life through different lenses, you know, and I've seen it through different perspectives. So um, the vision I have for it now and the things I see now may be a little different than somebody else. So um, what I try to do when I speak is kind of, you know, let people see life the way I see it through some of the lenses that I've had the pleasure of seeing it through, you know? So, uh, um, I basically, I just try to get out there and anything that I see fit or anything that I see is important, you know, I try to just speak on it, you know, and, um, a lot of times it's a great feedback. Sometimes, you know, people like certain ones more than the others, but you know, that, that, I feel like that's my purpose, you know, is to go out here and, um, try to reach as many people as I can by just telling my story, you know, and, uh, along with telling my story, you know, telling things that I've learned along the way, you know, so I'm kind of getting into that. So. If anybody wants to tune in to it, they can check out any of my social media platforms. But um, that's, that's definitely what I'm putting my energy into now. You know, just kind of like going on a little tour of speaking and kind of get my name out and kind of get my story out. Terrell, how much has it helped you having Big Brother with you in Pittsburgh? Man, it's amazing. Uh, just having them over there with me, having someone that you can honestly trust because you, you meet a lot of different people. You meet a lot of different people that's offering you different things that's... Uh, telling you different things that's promising you different things, mm -hmm. but at least you know that he's going to have your best interest when he do it. Uh, you can count on him through whatever. Uh, having someone that can stay with you, you're not staying in the house by yourself, that gets very boring. Mm -hmm. Having someone that will go out to eat with you, like Tremaine say, anytime <laughs> you want. It's just always having someone right there that you count, can count on, and I think that's big. Well, Tremaine, you don't have that advantage in Buffalo of having a brother with <laughs> you, but you have friends, uh, and that's crucial in the NFL you can't do this alone. Tell us about some of the camaraderie you've built up here in the in the Great White North the past three years. Yeah, definitely some good guys. Um, you know that I go out and you know have a meal with, or you know just relax with, watch watch another game or something mm -hmm. like that. So uh, it's definitely good that you know you could you know find your group of guys. I mean, not just a group of guys. I mean, I could pretty much call anybody on the team, man, and you know say, hey, you want to watch a game or something like that. But uh, you know, a lot of us, man, to be honest, we end kind of late. So by the time we're done. I just want to go on and relax yeah, myself, <laughs> but you know, those times we have a little bit extra time, of course, you know, I call a couple of guys and we may grab some food or something like that. Jermaine, how much do you talk to your brothers during the season? I know you guys stay really busy. They're together in Pittsburgh, but how, how much do you correspond with uh, your brothers during a season? Yeah, we talk a lot. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a big person. I like a lot of feedback, man. So, you know, I hit them up every now and then like, hey, what you think of the game? <laughs> you know, I just like to hear from somebody else, you know, because all the time you can't always, you know, get all the information from just yourself. You, obviously, you got to ask somebody that's real close to you that's going, you know, as we say, keep it 100 with you, you know, let you know exactly how, what they think about it and, you know, what you can do to improve next time. So, uh, and other times, you know, just kind of just want to take our mind off the sport, uh, ask about life, make sure everything's good, just just checking in daily, making sure life's going good. So they'll be honest with you. They're not yes men. Oh yeah, nah, nah, nah. They're too honest, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, not that, not that. Not Brutally always. Honest. It's not always what you want to hear, but at the end of the day, man, you, you want to hear from your family first, you know, yeah. rather be, than hear from somebody else. I mean, because by the time you hear from somebody else, you're already two steps ahead of them. Like, 
I didn't already heard this. Tell me yeah. something I don't know, you know? So <laughs> it, it's been good, not just from them. I think my whole family do a good job. We, we go back and forth all the time just because we may say, man, you don't know what you're talking about or whatever, but it's all love at the end of the day. We just want to see each other prosper, man, and, you know, grow as a player, not just as a player, just as a person off the field. So, uh, I mean, I think we all do a good job with that, and I appreciate them all for it. Let's shift gears a little bit and talk about uh, uh, the reason that we're here, uh, the foundations uh, that you guys are headed up and are supporting. Uh, talk about uh, this concept of giving back. I mean, that's something y'all have all three, in just the course of the last few minutes, you have mentioned something about giving back. Obviously, uh, Rel, I'll go start with you. That is a priority. That comes from your parents, that comes from your community, but giving back is something that's been drilled into you and you are, it's a part of who you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, just when I think about giving back, I'm thinking about this whole journey uh, to get to where I'm at now. I, did, I couldn't do it alone. Sure. Outside of my family, we had a lot of different people from coaches, from just people in the school system, from anybody around in the community just came out and helped us out in whatever way that they can. They supported us throughout this whole journey from high school to college to now, and they're constantly supporting with, with nothing for us to give back. And it's just like, we're just coming back to town and just help out the best way we can, show our face, um, going out to camps whenever we can and just try to give back because we're thankful. We're thankful for this opportunity that we have. We're thankful that we still have people that support us through my, no matter what. And I think that's just big and that's something that we we definitely hold on our hold on our shoulders and we, we feel comfortable doing. Maine, I'll get you to follow up. Uh, one thing he referenced, uh, you've referenced it before, gratitude. When you when you focus on gratitude and when it builds up inside of you, you can't help but to share when you are that grateful. Definitely, you know, we're, you know, very appreciative of everybody that shows support to our family and, you know, following our journey since we were, you know, kids playing at Kentuck, you know, and uh, as, as young boys, they, you know, they just followed our journey all the way up. And, you know, when you're getting that love, man, it's almost like, why not give it back? You know, you got kids out here that want to, that, that kind of want the blueprint. So, I mean, if you have it, if you've been through things that a lot of kids want to get through, I almost feel like, you know, what, what's holding you back? Why not go back and give it to them? So, you know, any anytime somebody have a question, you know, I try to answer it to, the, you know, the best way that I can answer it. Because, you know, a lot of my success came from, you know, people that have success themselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if if I can gain something from them, I know me sharing my knowledge with somebody, they can gain something from it. So, you know, anytime I have that opportunity, I try to, you know, shed light on others. And Trey, I'll get you to kind of uh, wrap up that this portion just by uh, giving us a, a little bit more about One Dream, One Team, mm -hmm. uh, the E-Boys of the, my Brother's Keeper Foundation, and the uh, Danville Church-Based Tutorial Program. These are entities that you've either created or you've supported uh, through your celebrity of being an NFL player and, of course, predominantly of having three mm -hmm. NFL players among you. These are important things to you, and these all target... Uh, people who really in today's society need some help. They need somebody to look up to. And I know serving a dual purpose has to just make you feel as large as life. Absolutely. Um, and I think those guys kind of hit it right on the nail. You know, just uh, being in the position in which we are right now, just having that opportunity. You know, people look at us like a celebrity, like we said, you know, right. but um, we don't we don't necessarily look at each other like that. We look at each other like your brothers, three, you know, brothers, like brothers. <laughs> like just three guys, you know, that came up from Denver, Virginia, that love playing football. You know, like that that's how we look at each other. So when people come up to us, hey, can I have your autograph? Can I have a picture? Um, how do I make it to the NFL? You know, like we don't take any of that stuff lightly mm -hmm. because uh, to for them to have to look at us in that light. It, it, we ha we had to have done something right along the way, you know. So I think, like, uh, kind of wrapping up what both of the guys said, just us having our own unique stories, you know, and being able to share them, and now forming a foundation which we're able to share them and give back. I think is wonderful, you know. And like you said, uh, teaming up with other different organizations and you know forming the One Dream One Team, uh, just having those opportunities and being put in that position to give back, to speak to people, you know, uh, to talk to people, to just share our stories, to just show face around the community. You know, I wouldn't want it no other way. And I'm sure these guys could attest to that as well. Um, you know, we try to do as much as we can, you know, for as many people as we can. So we just want to continue to build on that each year. And 
Um, if we can save one kid or if we can help one kid out along the way, then hey, I, I think we're doing something special or something right. I want to ask you about the new children's book that you yes. guys have uh, uh, just written. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. And I think you've got a copy of the book there. Tell us yeah. the title of the book and uh, what it's all about. Yeah, so uh, the title of the book is called My Brother's Keeper, What This Means to Me. So um, like you said, Mr. Carter, this is a children's book. Um, our family, we wanted to get together. And we wanted to provide something. You know, I know my goal, I always wanted to be an author. You know, I'm not sure about these guys, but I always wanted to be an author. But, you know, just having the opportunity to go out there and really like step foot and try our hand at, you know, publishing a book. I think we, we learned a lot along the way. You know, uh, we learned the intric intricacies about it. Mm -hmm. We learned how hard it could be. Mm -hmm. But we also learned how fun it was, you know. Uh, and I think, Rail, if you could open a couple of the pages just to show it off a little bit. <laughs> you know, so basically what we did was um, something very easy for the eye, something very easy to read. And we kind of wanted something to our youth around the community, you know, some some positivity. We wanted to show, like, our journey. Um we wanted to provide a lot of color. It, 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 that's basically what it is. That's awesome. First of many? We hope so. Yeah. <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. We hope so. But we, we had a lot of fun writing the book. And yeah. uh, we worked with some really good people doing it. So we're excited for everybody who will be purchasing the book. Well, this kind of flows from the positivity that all three of you exude. We live in a negative world, unfortunately. And in addition to having tangible things like these foundations to help people, you guys share something else intangible, positivity. Mm -hmm. I know y'all don't overlook that. That's important. Don't overlook it. Um, just being a good person at all times. That's something that my mom and dad instilled in us at a very young age, always saying, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I'm just having your manners, having everything, and, and being the same person at home that you are in the public. Uh, just constantly just being that good role model and being the example of if you go out here and you listen to your teachers if you listen to your coaches if you work hard this is where you can be this is where you can go and that's something that we constantly try to put on display the best way we can uh, we're not perfect but at the same time just constantly is showing them just this could be your route too and i think people appreciate that especially older people like myself and Chuck, when uh, when you say yes sir, no sir, mm -hmm. a lot of that, you, you don't hear that much. That used to make me days. feel old, now I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> but you don't see that so much these days. People mm -hmm. are kind of getting away from that, but it's refreshing that uh, you guys still carry that on and it comes from your upbring upbringing from mom and dad. Yeah, they always just... Uh, taught us that at a young age and they just told us to always take those matters with us wherever we go and now since we did it so much when we were younger it's just like it's so natural it comes so natural to us now and we constantly do it and it's just something i'm i'm, I'm happy that we do yeah. folks we hope you've enjoyed it yeah we got to get them to open up a little more next time we'll work on that but uh <laughs> Brown, Maine, Trey, thank you so very much Pleasure. for thank being you who you are, what you are, and what you're doing. God bless you for the positivity you're spreading, uh, not only in Danville and Pennsylvania County, but the world. And hopefully we can reach a few more people with this and help the foundations out and may the ripple of positive ripple effects of that um, reverberate throughout time. Thanks to all three of you. Continued no success with your pro football career and your rap music career. Thank you. And your we'll authorship. Your authorship. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Keep those books coming. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Dennis Carter, I'm Chuck Vipperman. Thanks a lot, everyone. Because we headed to the top like the good never make it. Feel like my mind gon' don't give it, we gon' take it. Just grind it, ain't no hating. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the E-Boy segment of this year's Gala. Man, this year we had a bunch of people sending in different questions for us to answer, and we thank you. We thank you for everyone that sent in questions. Right now, it's time to just get a little bit more personal, get a little bit more insight of what the E-Boys is really all about. So I guess I'll start off with the first question. My question is from Gurky. Ah, my bad if I said that wrong, but uh, Trey Tremaine, why do each of us wear our number? Why do you wear 33? Why do you wear 49? And why do I wear 34? I'll well, let you go first, Trey. Yeah, well, for me, I mean, 
when I first got to Pittsburgh, it was only a certain amount of numbers that they offered or that, that was available. So, um, I mean, my favorite number is three, but it's not really not really a correlation between the two. 33 was just the best available number. and Well, actually, when I got to the Saints, 33 yeah. was the best available number. And then when I got to Pittsburgh, I was able to keep the same number. So it was cool. I liked it. Think it's swagging? Think it's, it's definitely swagging. 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 I think I swagged it out. Okay, okay. I definitely think I swagged it out. It's, it's debatable, bro. Yeah, it's, you look all right. I mean, well, it look kind of sweet in some occasions. You know? 33 is dope. It's, I'm just saying. It's dope. It's kind of sweet in some occasions. What about 49? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy because, man, I got the tech, man. I, you know what I mean? I'm going in. I'm thinking I was number two in high school. I don't mm-hmm. know if y'all remember or not, but I got in. Got in there, man. They asked me what number. They didn't even actually scratch that. They didn't even ask me what number I was. <laughs> they just gave me four nine. Like here, take this. Uh-huh. So I, I took it. You know what I mean? I was a true freshman coming in, so I was like, I'm gonna rock with it. You know what I mean? I'm gonna make something happen out of it. Yeah. Right. So you no, feel me? I, I I played true freshman year. Kind of, you know, uh, that's that's kind of where it took off at. Uh, started two games, I want to say. Um, so ever since then, man, people knew me as four nine. So I'm like, I'm gonna rock it out. So I'm rock so it out. The question is. is it- is it a swaggy number? Definitely the least swaggy out of all. Because <laughs> I think that's sure. a fat. That's a fat number. So I, I, like, I, close I will. To 50, it was closer than fifty, so I don't really know how you. Yeah. Chip on linebacker number. <laughs> yeah, what do, you, what do you think? Nah, I will say, I think I make it look sweet, like <laughs> to keep it hot. Like, <laughs> what do you think, bro? I mean, he does have a little sauce. I saw the all red fit. Okay. I think it's kind yeah. of sauce. Okay, talk to me about that. Just four, though. Okay, about three four. Uh, so when I got to the Steelers, I, I wanted to get number 22. Uh, my old veteran already had it. I think my numbers were between like 34 and 30, you no, know, 40 something. And I was like, man, I can't go to the 40s. You yeah. would have number 40 number. Yeah, it was, it was in the 40s. So I was like, man, 34 was the best number that I could do. So I just kept it going with the 34. And I just didn't switch it. I had a chance to switch it my second year. But I was like, I'm going to just stick with the 34. That's that's dope. So, fellas, listen up. Uh, Man, it's that time of the year again. Like, it seems like we're in the same position as we were in last year, you know. Um, getting ready to start training with a whole lot of uncertainties. You know, I remember, I can remember we was here in Danville when everything first happened. You know, we just got back from our vacation. You remember? Great. Boys, remember mm-hmm. them hills? <laughs> tell them, man. <laughs> so just, just, just tell them. Like, tell us a little bit about, like, the different workouts we had. You know, and uh, I can start off, you know, because, man, I had to document it. It was so many places and so many things we did. I had to document it, like. Do you guys remember like working out at Urban Fitness? You know, waking up early mm-hmm. in the morning, going right. out Urban Fitness, hitting the back, the little thing they got in the back. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, with the tires. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Tell, tell us a little bit about what you guys remember. Like, you guys remember any workout spots or any workouts? Man, really, just I remember downtown on the bridge. We were doing like different sprints, high knees Spring and stuff. Uh, over the water was kind of crazy. So you Hot know, like 90 man. degrees. Yeah, bro, it was I, 90 degrees. Listen, bro, I know y'all it's remember the one time, bro. We was out there, and, and and Mama told us to warm up. She said, "Take a, take a quick lap to warm up." I'm thinking we're just gonna take a quick lap around one block and come right back. And you feel me? Get the workout started. But we ran the whole downtown. Yeah, <laughs> like the whole thing. And then after that, we hit. I don't even know how many hills we hit. What, what that boy Trey was hurting. Bye. Y'all trying to get, <laughs> trying to get weak? I remember that time Big Hoss uh, grabbed the four big forty five plates in the back of the house. And we had to press. We them. had to press them. Get them off of you. <laughs> get them off. Hey, what, about, said, get what, about, off what about the workouts at uh at Avery and Darren River outside? Yeah, the, the fields. fields. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was cool. I mean, it was, it was hot. Same. That's it was what hot. it was. It was hot. It was definitely hot. It was cool, though. I think for the most part. Now, what about this one? This is one I really remember. Remember, we uh we had the trash bag and we filled the trash bag with water. And then we put the water oh, yeah, yeah, back inside yeah, of the yo. t-shirt and we tied the t-shirt at the yo, end. Because we couldn't We get called it a drill workout, remember? Yeah. Yo. And we just sitting there doing curls and presses and we did all types of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like we literally had to get so creative because things were so limited. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, before our equipment got here that we ordered, we just had to just make a way. But on Hudo, after you finished that workout, boys had a nice little <laughs> pump though. <laughs> it, was it, was over. it was over. I felt like I could take on anything after that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely understand that. But That's- I mean... It's um, definitely crazy, man. It's definitely crazy. Let's see what other kind of questions we got out here, man. Yeah, what you got, man? I got one. Uh, I don't know the name to it, but somebody asked, what would you say to a high school athlete that wants to start playing football at a young age? Or rewording it when they first enter high school? Uh, I would say that it takes a lot of commitment and it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of... Everything you have to have luck, you have to have 
time. You have to have preparation. You have to have hard work. Like, you have to have grades. You have to have everything. But it's attainable. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think when people look at it, it's like, like nah, it's too far-fetched for me. Like, I can never make it. Nah, I don't think it's like that. Like, yeah. It's it's in arm's reach. We did it. You yeah. know? We, yeah. we came from Denver High School. We did it. But it, it takes a lot of everything. Yeah, I really just think that you just got to want it. Definitely. That's the biggest thing. You just got to want it. You can't have somebody that wanted more than you. Absolutely. Like, you got to go out there ready to work every day. You got to just put in your mind, regardless of what anybody say, that you're going to go out there and get it. Because how many people that y'all know, like, they didn't want it when they was really in high school and mm-hmm. really didn't want it when they was in college. But after they finished, they were still now they want to go back there. Right. And now you see them in the gym all the time. Bro, so now they grinding bro, for Bro, I work. think one thing that we don't understand, well, that a lot of people don't understand is that their work that you have to put in, you can't minimize it. Like, you really have to put in that work. And I'm talking about in all areas and all facets. Like, you have to put in that work daily. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't take days off. And we know that. Yeah, man. You know, so sure. like if we trying to relate a message, like that's what it is. Nah, for you sure. know what I'm saying? So let's see what I have here. Uh, this question is from Unk45. Hmm. Says, through all of the success with your family, how did you, as well as your brothers, still maintain to find yourself as men beyond the lights and fame? Jermaine, what do you think? Yeah, I think it goes back to, man, your values. Like, what do you value in life? And you know, you know, for me, man, it's family, you know, faith, and uh, your friends. Three and Fs. I, yep, three Fs, man. Keep it simple, you know. Just three things that you could always rely on, man. You always got to keep family with you. You know what I mean? Keep Not family sure. with you, man. Without y'all, who knows where I would be at, you know. So, and without without our parents, man, you know, giving us that guidance at a young age, right. man, and you know, us growing up and learning right from wrong. Uh, I mean, I think that speaks volumes to you know where we are today. And speaking of that, and I'm going to let you get on the two, Rev, but speaking of that, man, like, I think, like, the family and friends is a huge aspect of it. You know, I can remember back uh, December 15th, 2019, when all three of us played together. And, you know, the support we had from all of our family and friends, you know, like, everybody out there. you know, thinking before the game is trying to figure out, like, how's everybody going to dress? Like, they got Tremaine on the Bills, they got Trey Trill on the Steelers, like, what are they going to wear? Like, how are they going to come to the games? Who are they going to cheer for? But it was simple. All of us, you know, like they had split hats, like they had hats and shirts that said a house divided. Like I can remember my parents and family and friends and everybody dressed in half Buffalo, half students. Like they made it work, you know, like people got creative, people who made the clothes, who made the hats, who made the uh, gear and paraphernalia, like they, they made it all work. You right. know? So I think it's just all about, man, if you, if you got a vision, if you want to do something, it could be work. But definitely, definitely. definitely like their support, man, it can't go unnoticed. You know, no, sure, bro. You know, so so real. Uh, let me let me ask you. Um, so this is an interesting question, and this is from. Okay, this is from Chantel Brown. So, Terrell, how do you feel playing with me? So she said, "How do you feel playing with Trey, but also missing an important part of the link that you're used to having with you, me and Tremaine." So what's your thoughts? I mean, just playing with your brother, you know, that's always fun. It's a dream come true. It's something that everyone probably would want to do, especially right. at this level that we are that we're on now. Right, right. And just um, even though I'm not playing with Tremaine, just seeing him still in the NFL, right. and we all playing in the NFL right now, I think that is just mind blowing because that's amazing. Uh, because a lot of people can't say that. A lot of people can't even say that they made it to the NFL, but to say that all of your brothers are in the NFL and you play on the team with your brother. That's just amazing, I think. Do you ever think that it's more special being able to be that you could play with your brothers and against your brothers, or do you think just making it to the NFL is special enough? I mean, honestly, when I was younger, I kind of uh, told myself, like, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted right. to go to the NFL. So it was like that was what I was working for. So that part of it, I kind of jumped over that hill. Okay. And now I'm at this point now, like, this is even more unique now like this is even more dope just being able to play against and with one of y'all okay yeah i got the next one man let's ease this thing up a little bit let me see got some good questions man oh it's a good one right here now i know what i like so i want to ask y'all boys they asked me what's a typical meal like for you at a restaurant after you just finished getting a big time win and it's time to step out time to take your family out what y'all boys eating on i know for me man 
Depends on the place I'm going. I'm going to a steakhouse, first of all. I'm going to get a little ice water to start, a little lemonade. It depends on how I'm feeling. The reward myself. Might get a little appetizer calamar. Might get a little some wings or something. Uh, depending on where we at. Might get, you know, some some scallops wrapped in bacon. You know, I'm getting a little... You know, I got my where place. You going? Look, look, I got my place now packed, so I know what they got well, there. You need so. to tell us where you going, so I can make sure to order that. Listen, you know? any any big time steakhouse or whatever. Okay. If it's not a steakhouse, man, I might hit the hit the soul food. They hit the spot just as much for me. So I'm trying to see, man. What what what's y'all's first go to? Man, I like a steak the size of my back. <laughs> you know, I want it the size of my back, and I want it cooked to perfection. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of times after our games, especially we was on that 11 0 street. Man, that steak tastes better and better each week. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, Ray, what you think? Nah, I'm a steak guy too. I mean, I like the Wagyu type steak. Oh, hey, Wagyu, man. extra hey, butter. Because it tastes just like butter. It, it, it You can cut it so easy. Uh, got your lobster macaroni and cheese on the side, your mashed potatoes on the side, your calamari, like man said, probably some oyster Rockefeller. Just to start us off. <laughs> oh, he trying to get fancy for real. You know what I mean? Just to start I treat yourself up, though. though. How y'all like y'all steaks? Medium well. Medium well? Medium well. Medium well. Sometimes medium plus. Medium, medium plus. Well, yeah. I don't like really medium. like all that pink and well. Can't have that. It's about well done. Y'all do the well done steak? Yeah, I be, used to, man. I, I, I used to when I was sure. younger. It's a burger. Yeah, they're going to. I'm slowly starting to get to that medium the well. The thing about it, if you got a well done steak at the table, you shaking the whole table while you're trying to cut. <laughs> hey, but some places <laughs> well is done. Well, times, some places well done is, 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 is yeah. other places medium well. Sometimes, yeah. So, fellas, 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 um, got a question for both of you guys. How do you brothers celebrate Christmas? Because I know, like, during the season, it's either week 16, 17. Next year, it could be, you know, I think they're adding the game next year. So, it's really going to be a little time before you get to, get to be together with your families for Christmas and open up presents and things like that. So, like, how, how do you celebrate Christmas and Tremaine, you being in Buffalo by yourself and Terrell, us being in Pittsburgh, like, what do we do? Like, what what are some what are some things like? Man, we we celebrate. We celebrate like we kids. You know what I mean? We when when does that happen though? You know I mean, we you know we wait to after to after everybody's season is over with. Okay. Uh, so whenever that is, you know, our season would have looked longer than y'all's this year. So obviously, the anticipation of opening up gifts and see what we got uh, was obviously pushed back a little bit. But man, you can never be too old for Christmas. I don't think you know. Mm -hmm. I know I was excited. I was like, man, I wonder what my brothers got me this year, man. They got a little extra change in their pocket. Like, oh, they got me something good. So let me ask you that, though. You made a good point. Like, do you guys come up with a certain amount or you just get what you think they might like? Like, what, what does that go? Because you got to think about it. Like, Terrell can get whatever he want. I can get whatever I want. Like, so how do you get a guy a present like that? Like, you want to get him something, but how do you go about getting him a present like that? Just get whatever you think they like. Okay, so no restrictions on price or any of that style or anything like that. Just get them what you think they may like. Nah, I don't think okay. there's no restriction on it. Uh, just because now you got at the at the point in, in life that you can just go out and go get it. That's right. So saying. it's like just go get what you think they like or think that uh, they may want or okay. what they even said that they want. So that's what I think. Okay. I got a question right here. It's from uh, Will downtown, you know, at Urban. He said... What is your why? So mm -hmm. that's for everybody. What's your why? That's a good question. Man. That's, that's a good question. One of y'all go first. Y'all can go ahead and say it. Oh, uh, my why, man. I, I could go all day talking about this, but, you know, to be quick. Um, my why is to give other people uh, a chance, you know, that, that think that they may not necessarily have that same chance. You know, to show other people that's coming from the same places that I came from, that's looking the same way I look. You know, that's putting in similar work that I'm putting in to basically show them that it's a way you can make it, you know. But like I said earlier, it's going to take a lot of grit. It's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a lot of prayers, determination, sacrifices. It's going to take a lot of that. So the reason I continue to do what I do each and every year is because I'm constantly trying to prove to myself that I belong. I'm also constantly trying to show other youngsters that's coming up. You can do the same thing I'm doing, but this is how you do it. Like you can't just get to where I'm at. You have to, you have to go through all the steps I went. You, you can't skip. You know what I'm saying? So, each and every year, I'm trying to make those steps clearer and clearer. So, you know, uh, without going down a, a rabbit hole, I mean, that's 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 simply my why. 
Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Uh, my why, man, has always been just to prove people wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what drives me the most in this game, man, is when somebody say I can't do something, and when somebody start doubting me, you know. So I don't, I don't never get too caught up in reading comments and reading what people got to say. But really, man, all it takes is for one person to, to not believe in me, or one person to say I can't do this, or one person to, you know, not think I'm good enough or something like that. So. I mean, that's gonna push me, man. I don't know about y'all, boys, but nah, that's I always I always find something deep in me, man. You say one thing, I'm, my mission is to go out there and prove you wrong each and every time. So when I step foot on that field, that's that's what's on my mind. Like you said, I can't do this. It's time to prove them wrong. Let me show these folks that this is what I do. You know what I mean? Like, I don't say too much, but I'm a bit, I like I like to let my game, my work, work. You know, um, speak for me. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, though. For me, it's kind of a mix of, both, of what both of you guys said, man. A little bit proving people wrong, a little bit trying to show the youngins what's up. And also, just I know we all like nice things. That's just, it motivated me to go get right. So I just said that because I definitely was going to ask you guys, like, does I'm money sorry. not play a point in it? Like, yeah, money play a big point. Okay. In it for, okay. I think for anybody, anybody that do anything. Any job, right? Yeah, any job, money plays a big part into it. So if, right. they, if someone ever say that you shouldn't think about the money, that would be. Nonsense, honestly, because everybody, everyone thinks about the money with any job that they play in. So right. you love the game, but you're also thinking about other things as well. So let me ask you a question, man. So what you think about guys that only play this sport just for the money? You agree with it? or I, I think it's hard. I, it's, it's extremely hard because the stuff you have to do and endure, I don't think money is enough, you know, to, to keep you coming back each and every day, each and every year. Like, it's just too much we have to go through, and it's, it's so much like... Being in the public eye like that and being scrutinized and it's a lot. I don't think money is enough. Like you have to love it and to get up each and every day and the way your body feels each and every day, like you gotta love it. Got to. That's my take on it. So fellas, listen. Uh, I know we don't got too much time, but man, I, I have to ask you. Um, and along with this question, I want you guys to kind of elaborate, you know, and kind of leave like your final thoughts. You know, like what, what would you leave the people with today? you know, after meeting Terrell, Tremaine, and Trey. So, um, first part of it is, what is your advice to the next generation or someone else that could be watching this? You know, that's for both, that's for all three of us to answer. We can start with you, Terrell, and also after you answer that question, just kind of leave like with final remarks. Like, what would you say to the next generation or anyone watching this show from Terrell Evans? Uh, for anyone that's watching this or the next generation, I would just say, don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something. Just constantly work, constantly uh, go out there and do it. And regardless if you get good feedback, negative feedback, any type of feedback, all publicity is going to put that in. That you, whatever you're doing, somebody's going to put it in some room that could possibly help you. So just keep on working regardless what anybody say. Uh, just keep on working, keep on striving, and go get it. That's all what I'm saying. Publicity is good publicity. I like all that. All pub is good pub. Right there. That's what I said. Yeah. I think for me, man, the biggest thing, if you don't hear nothing I say is have a vision. You know, um, if you don't have a vision, man, we, like, how can you get where you want to be with no vision? I think that's one thing that, you know, people get, people people have so much success, man, because they visualize themselves having that success before they actually have it. Mm -hmm. Just like on the field, man, we, we visualize ourselves making a play before that play even happened. Mm -hmm. And you got to do the same thing about life, man. You got to picture yourself, like, what do you see yourself at in, say, five years? Then once that five year hit, what do you see yourself in the next five years? And keep 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 in track of that. Write this stuff down. So you're big on making goals and writing down. Yeah, I'm, I'm big on it. I'm big on it, man, because if if nobody else, you, you, you're responsible of, of, of your own self. Okay. You got to, you got to, you got to take accountability for yourself. And once you take that accountability, man, I mean, the sky's going to be the limit. Absolutely. Uh, for me, man, it's just be relentless. Man, uh, I went through a lot just to get here, you know, in college, man. Just being able to sit out. I played one full year of college football. Mm. One full year. Yeah, you had a lot of injuries. Even that year, like, I still don't think I was 100%. I know I wasn't at 100%, you know, but it's about being relentless and that could be about and that could be in anything you do you know whether it's in the work whether it's in life whether it's in sports like being relentless having that dog and 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 whatever you do going as hard as you can go you know what i'm saying like that's the mentality i take with everything and that's how i'm on year five and that's how you guys are on year four like 
just being relentless, walking into a room, knowing that you should be there, you know, and, and stating your dominance and letting people know, like, okay, here, yeah, I'm here to stay. It's not by accident I'm here, you know, and just having that never quit attitude. And, man, my piece of advice that I would leave to people is just figure out a way how to turn a passion into a paycheck. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, man, we all have passion. We have aspirations of what we want to do in life. Let's do it. Like, you can get paid for doing pretty much anything in this world, but it's finding that avenue, finding that navigation, finding a way how to make what you do for fun turn into a paycheck. And if we do that, man, everybody will be fulfilling their purpose. You know what I'm saying? See, the key word that you said was having that dog. And I think, you know, a lot of a lot of people nowadays, man, they, they get that confused. They think having dog, man, you got to be the loudest person in the room. Yeah, yeah. They think working out, you got to be the loudest. You got it. I'm here. You know, I'm here. Everybody the, the man of the hour is here. They think that's that's having dog, but that's not it. You could be the most quiet person, but still go out there and outwork everybody. No doubt. You know what I mean? So I think that's the thing people gotta understand, man. What like what is what is, what is what does it mean to really be a dog? What, what gets you going? Yeah, what gets you going? What gets you going can be different than what gets me going. Exactly. Well, man, I think we said some good things today. Uh, Brad, would you like to sign us out? Man, I think we definitely hit on some good topics. Yeah, man. Just thank you guys for just tuning in, locking in with this. Uh, this is the E Boy segment today, man. We heard a lot of great information from my brothers and myself. And man, thank you guys, and till next time. That we gon' be straight Don't let them tell you different I's gon' burn you like a hot plate And with them shorties Don't be filled or talking Ain't no safe place They talking, setting up Too many times I'm feeling all alone Stressed out of a couple of dollars I gave my all and now you're gone I put the rights up in We hope you enjoyed An Evening with the Edmonds Brothers It's a production of the One Team One Dream Foundation